Hello there, welcome to video number two in my first series of um, basic painting. This one's going to be covering layering, which is just basically painting paint on in a layer. Um, so I've got my Faye and Prickly Leaves miniature from Blackthorn Miniatures, which um, I indicated in my previous video. Um, and as previously, you could just spray it all black or all white or grey or whatever, whatever works with you, whatever you have available. And we'll go through the basic layering principles of applying paint. So we have paint brushes. I like my broken toed ones, especially the flathead ones, but you can use whatever brush you want, really, to be honest. It's just preference. And once you get used to it, you can pick up your favourite brush. Uh, water for cleaning the brush, tissue for cleaning your brush. Um, some kind of paint thinner, uh, this acrylic retarder stuff, um, cause it stops the paint from drying so quickly. So I can mess around with it, but you can use anything. There's, um, Vallejo glaze medium over here, which is always good. Um, there's Lamian medium by Games Workshop or just plain old water. Um, the, the mediums though, the glaze mediums and the Lamian mediums are probably a little bit better than water as, um, mediums are basically paint without the color so you're just loosening it up with more paint as opposed to water so it, it might separate to touch more um and we have our palette here which you don't have to have a palette you could just have like like i used to use uh an old photo frame just use the glass bit of the photo frame just to squirt paint on mix it around and thin it and stuff um, and I've got a basic skin color which I was going to use um, pink flesh by scale color but you can use any decent skin color um, cadmium flesh tone by citadel is quite good I'll add to my little palette here in the one available space I have my medium and we'll just do a little squirt of this stuff um, I do like this this particular one just for the consistency it starts out real thick so you can thin it down quite nicely and quite a few places in the UK sell it even if it is a Spanish company which is quite cool oh yeah and also for people who have rubbish eyes like me I also use a jeweler's lens which sits on my head and has I think it's three and a half times magnification so we're all set we've got a model we've got a paint ready thin that paint a bit now thin paint is a lot easier to control but it takes a bit longer to dry so it's entirely optional the games workshop stuff works okay out of the pot let's um add a little bit of skin on then a little bit of skin color now we're going to be uh, so i'm going to be doing a few layers so it'll look a bit sketchy at first but we're literally just brushing it on. I like to brush towards one particular direction. And we're getting a reasonably thin layer on then. And it look, yeah, like I said, it looks sketchy at first, but um, once we've done a couple of layers and smooth things out, then it'll look a lot better than it is now. Don't need to be neat at this stage, just jam it around, let it dry, do another layer. Easy. So um, we'll do a little example of what happens if we go back over a paint that hasn't completely dried yet. So like when paint dries, it, um, it stops being wet to the touch, but then it cures for a little while, especially with this stuff I'm using, which slows the drying time. Um, before paint is cured completely, if you go over it with the brush, then it could tear, which is 
basically where it removes the layer of paint. Thank you, Frank. So with the initial layering, we're just kind of planning out where the color's gonna be. It doesn't matter how messy we are, to be honest. We're gonna be painting over everything anyway. So as it's still shiny, that's the paint curing and not quite ready for the next layer yet. I think the face is okay in most of the places, so I'll start doing a second layer there. I did it quite thin on the face. Now I do have this quite thin and I'm using a drying retarder. That's just the way I paint. Um, you can just slap it on straight out of the bottle if you want to, that's perfectly fine as well. As long as you kind of just get used to the um, process of applying the paint. Now everywhere's wet. I should have made a cup of tea. Right, hopefully it's dried a bit. So that's the initial layer. We can see it's still curing in some of the thicker places over here. But we'll go for another pass. We might even get some screen tearing. Uh, screen tearing. Some paint tearing. Let's see. So I'm kind of like doing a circular motion quite quick onto here and just dabbing it really mainly to cover a lot of space and to get an even coat so um, with miniatures, with any kind of miniatures, like be it display stuff like this or a Space Marine or um, some of the Age of Sigma stuff I paint, um, because it's smaller than real life, you tend to exaggerate and emphasize lighting more than you would normally. You think that um, just like the doing a basic paint scheme and letting the natural light um, do all that for you would work but unfortunately it doesn't plus you get to play around with some really cool concepts as well so I mean just a, a plain flat colour looks perfectly fine looks good I mean maybe once it tries and stops being so shiny and um, at this stage you can happily go on and do all the other basic colours and see how the model looks overall um, or you can work on a particular point, like the, the focal point point for this miniature would be like the face and the surrounding hair and the shoulder. So you could bring those up to however happy you are and then work around it or um, just do everything, see how that comes out. It's, it's personal preference, to be honest, really. Um, I tend to... Hmm. I tend to paint the eyes first, like I tend to do uh, a rough skin like I'm doing here and then I'll paint the eyes and a bit of the face detail and then see where I go from there. But it's perfectly fine if you want to like do the hair and the nettles now. Do, 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 do. So one thing which I'm absolutely terrible at with brushes, uh, let me see it right here. Um, it's good practice to try and get paint just on the end half of it. Um, you could get paint, oh, you could get paint build up 
and the other 50% of it. And if it dries, especially around the base of it, it can make the make the brush fray out quite a bit and clump up. Um, a good wash with um, something like washing up liquid or a de dedicated brush cleaner would be fine. But if you leave it in there, um, it can ruin the tip of brush. Like for example, this poor thing. It wants to focus. Yeah. See here that it's completely lost its tip and it's just bleh because I didn't take too much care of it and all the paint along the bottom half dried up and I haven't been able to get all of it out. It did have a lovely tip and I used to do like small faces with it but it's all all bleh now. Of course do whatever the hell you want. While I'm waiting for the third layer of the skin to dry I'm going to do a little bit of um a little bit of the hair. So this is wood shade by Scale Color Artist, but I'm sure there's equivalents all over the place. It's just a very nice kind of brownie colour. So with um with the the skin area, there's a lot of um flat areas to paint, whereas hair can be quite textured, but it's still the same principle. It's just Dragging it along. Of course, I'm using a big brush, aren't I? So this might fail. Doesn't matter how much I am at this stage, to be honest. This is one of the reasons why I prefer flat headed brushes, is that I can cover a lot of area quickly if I wanted to. And then sideways, I can be quite precise. but you can use whatever you want, to be honest. Just as long as you get used to how it feels in your hands and I should slap a GoPro on my head or something. One part of layering is if you have quite a distance between the bit you're painting and the bit you're holding, it'll wibble around quite a bit. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm holding it quite tightly there and also resting my pinky on any sticky out bits to stop the model from wibbling. So I'm literally just dragging the brush towards my hand slightly, just a little flick, flick, flick towards my hand. And yeah, feel free to just move the model around as freely as you need to be getting all the crevices you need to get the brush in. There, so that was the basis of the um the hair colour I was gonna use. And we could do another pass on the skin. Hopefully that would be um the skin nice and even then, but we'll see. And I've came to dog hair. Yeah. Appears to be a tail hair. And just flicky, flick, 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 flick towards the rest of my hand. And oh look, I've torn it. Hey, that's what I was talking about. So I've torn away the previous layer, which hadn't completely cured, and we can see the undercoat underneath. Amazing. I've torn it again. I should leave it to cure. Well, there we go. Anyway, that's the um the basics of layering. I've just done a couple of colours on her. Come on, zoom in. Just sort of um, sketched out where the skin's going to go, the rough hair colour. And this um, this piece only really has three things going on with it. Just the skin, the hair, and the um, prickly leaves. Yeah, so brushing towards my hand in little flicks like that gets gets the paint nice and smooth and even. And a few layers thin down, leaving it to dry. If you're doing like um, like a project, like a unit or something like that, then whacking down a layer on one model, moving on to the next one and doing the layer 
down the line. When you come back to the first one, it should be nice and drying. That's why like painting other bits on a miniature would be um, helps with the wait time with the initial stuff going on. So yeah, I hope that's been useful. Um, next video, hello Fred. Next video we'll go through shading and highlighting. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you soon.